Hi everyone, this is the second video on the determination of chemical formulas and here I'm going to start uh, discussing the actual methods that you're going to, or in calculation steps that you're going to need to do in order to uh, work through a decomposition analysis or combustion analysis type problems, okay? So if you want to work through um, decomposition analysis, remember that the data that you get out of a decomposition analysis is you get the masses of the elements, right? So one of the things that you have to do first is just kind of work through and determine what is the percent composition of the elements if you're not given masses um, or actual masses of the elements if you have them, okay? So these first two are, are kind of the steps that you have to start with. If you're given percent composition, then you want to figure out using those percent composition what is the actual mass of the elements. So if you don't, if you're not given a total mass, you can use usually 100 grams just for convenience um, to convert the percentages into masses. Once you have masses of elements, then what you need to do is then use those masses and convert them to number of moles of each element. Remember, you can do that by dividing with the molar mass or the atomic mass in this case, uh, the molar mass of the elements. Once you have the number of moles, then what you want to do is use the number of moles and relate it to uh, all the other elements and divide them so that uh, there will be a lowest whole number ratio among elements, okay? And we'll do this in an example in a second. Once you have the lowest whole number ratio among the elements in terms of number of moles, then what you need to do is then propose an empirical formula based on uh, those uh, ratio. And then from the empirical formula, if you have the molar mass, you can then use it to figure out the molecular formula. Okay, let's look at this problem here which is uh, an example of how you would approach the type of problem that I just discussed for decomposition analysis. So here, this is related to vitamin C, which, uh, by the way, is a common antioxidant that um, people take every day, and it's believed to strengthen the immune system. That's why you take them. Uh, a decomposition analysis of a, of a vitamin C sample shows that it is composed of 40.92% carbon, 4.58% hydrogen and 54.5% oxygen by mass. The question is, what is the empirical formula of vitamin C? Okay, so this is the problem that we were asked earlier, where we were told that if we have vitamin C and it has the following percent composition, 40.92%, carbon, and so on, what is the empirical formula? So if you look back at the slide that shows you how to progress step by step through these type of problems, the first thing you have to do is convert these percent um, composition to masses, to actual masses, because then we'll use those masses and convert them to moles. So to convert these to masses, the easy way is just to make an assumption that you have 100 grams of material, okay? That's easy because uh, automatically then the percentages can then be converted to grams. So then that, if you have 100 grams of material, that means you're going to have 40 0.92 grams of carbon, uh, you're going to have 4.58 grams of, ox of hydrogen, and then uh, 54.5 grams of oxygen. Now what you can do is then convert this to their number of moles, right, because that's the next step. If you want to convert this number of moles, remember what you have to do is you have to use your molar mass. It's really just a dimensional analysis type problem where you want to use molar mass in this case as your conversion factors. You want to get these two number of moles. So then for every mole of carbon you have 12 grams. This is the average mass. You can uh, find this in the periodic table. And then for hydrogen this would just be one uh, mole. And there's one gram for hydrogen. And then for oxygen it's uh, similarly if you have one mole of uh, oxygen you have 16 grams on average. Okay. So then we can do all these calculations. And if you do that, what you get is, of course, uh, 40.92 divided by 12 is just 3.41. Now you have moles of carbon. This one would just be the same number, so 4.58 moles of hydrogen. And then this one would actually be 3. Point, if I just write out all the numbers right now, it's moles of oxygen. 
3.40625. Okay, so if you go back to that slide that shows you the series of steps in order to get to the empirical formula, after you get the mole <clears throat> number of moles of each of the element, then what you want to do is get to the mole ratio uh, and reduce this to the smallest whole number ratio uh, possible. Now, right now, of course, you don't have whole numbers. You have 3.41 moles of carbon, and then you have, in this case, 4.58 uh, moles of hydrogen, and then you have 3.40625 mole oxygen. If you want to reduce this a whole number, then the trick is really to just divide this by the smallest number of moles that you have in the series of number of moles that you have. And you, you can see that in this case, this number is this one that's smallest. So I'm just going to divide all of them by uh, 40625 and 3.40625. If you do that, then what you have here is about 1.00 moles carbon and then this one of course will just be one moles of oxygen and if you do this for the hydrogen you actually get a number that's this 3. Uh, 1.345 moles hydrogen okay so then uh, what you see is that you have a ratio where you have one carbon to 1.345 hydrogen to one point uh, to one oxygen okay now these are not whole numbers still because your hydrogen obviously is still uh, not a whole number so what you have to figure out here is how do I convert this hydrogen to a whole number and if you think about 1.345 it's pretty close to 1.33 which is really just uh, if you think about writing this as fractions this number is just close to 4 over 3 moles of hydrogen and if you uh, then write all of these in terms of fractions of 3 1 of course is just 3 over 3 and the same thing with this carbon right here is 3 over 3 moles of carbon so then what you can do is then to get rid of uh, all the trees you just multiply across by 3 and so in the end, what you have is 3 moles of carbon to 4 moles of hydrogen to 3 moles of oxygen. Okay? And that's really your empirical formula. You can write this uh, as follows. So I'm going to write this on the side here uh, just so that you can see. Where we're at earlier we were figuring out the that it's three moles of carbon four moles of hydrogen and three moles of oxygen so then the formula itself will just be c three h four and o three okay now usually for empirical formula we would write this and we would put a uh, letter n at the outside this is just a multiplier this is a whole number it could be one could be two could be three and that depends on what the actual molar masses of this uh, molecule. So what I want you to do actually is to go out uh, on the web and look up the formula for vitamin C and what you should see is it should be a whole number multiple of this formula. Okay, it might be this formula it's itself, might be twice this formula or it might be three times and so on. Okay. Okay, so that's how you would uh, do a decomposition analysis and then calculation that follows. Uh, what I'm going to do uh, is stop the video right now. I'm going to move on to the next video, which will um, talk about uh, combustion analysis. That's usually a little bit more difficult, so I want to just set up a video on uh, one video on just combustion analysis so we can work through that example as well.